Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're wrapping up our day here at the Open Compute Project Summit in Santa Clara, California, 2017. I think it's about 3,000 people here, a really bunch of smart technical people, really into the guts of cloud, into the guts of compute, storage, and networking. And we're really excited to have David Florey, the CTO and co-founder of Wikibon, who's been perusing the floor all day, on for our last segment to kind of wrap the show and give us this update. So first off, Dave, always great to see you. Thank you, thanks for, thanks for having me here. Absolutely, so let's jump into the three horsemen of, of, uh, of, of the computer industry, right? right? So there's compute, store, and networking. So right. let's start with compute. What have you seen here that, uh, that you're excited about, this change in the game? Well, uh, we're seeing uh, Intel, of course, come out with a whole number of new announcements, uh, et cetera, in the, in the processor game. But the really interesting ones are uh, the ARM, uh, the ARM Knight 9, uh, version 9, sorry, the ARM processor, which is from uh, uh, Qualcomm, uh, that's coming out. What is interesting about it is that it's the first 10 nanometer uh, computer coming out from this. So it's coming out from the uh, coming out from the mobile phone area. Right. So you're seeing the mobile technology now coming into the server technology, which if you think about it, is the replay of what Intel did so many years ago. They came from the PC right. up into the servers. Right. So we're, for the first time we're seeing the, uh, the mobile moving into the uh, server area. Which as we know, scale is such a powerful driver of innovation. Absolutely. Just because it's cameras yep. and everything yep. else that's kind of come out of this billions of mobiles that are produced every year. Right. That are showing up all over the place. Absolutely, so that's uh, very interesting to see that come in. And then the second thing which is interesting is uh, to see open power come in. And they, they've come in with the uh, the, the Power 9 uh, series is not yet generally available, but they've got it here in, in demonstration mode in a number of the booths. And what's interesting there is that you've got the fastest I.O. in the Gen 4 PCIe. So that is, that is very much faster than Gen 3. And the, at the top end, power is really doing a very nice job of going after that uh, top end space. So you're seeing new processes coming in at the bottom with the ARM and Qualcomm, and then you're seeing the uh, higher performance ones coming in from the power at the top. So it's, it's interesting to see that OCP is embracing all three platforms right, right. Uh, at, uh, at, at this, uh, this convention. And we've seen power kind of grow. They, were, they had like this little co-located thing at yep. the uh, NVIDIA GPU tech conference that we first covered a couple of years ago. That's right, yes. And really, you know, IBM's behind it, but taking kind of an open source approach to drive innovation, and you're starting to say that this is really starting to gain traction it, and momentum. It, it is, I mean, Google themselves are using it uh, in their platform, so it's start, starting to take off for real, and of course the ARM uh, platform as well. So we're, we're, we're seeing a multi-platform environment for, for the first time, really, in, okay. in, in earnest. In yeah. earnest, awesome. Okay, so mm. that's the compute. Let's right. jump over to store. Obviously, you got a long history in storage. What are you seeing that's new and innovative in the storage side? Well, the, everybody here is focusing on NVMe. Uh, it's, they're focusing on Flash, they're focusing on NVMe. They, that is a much, much faster way of connecting to the processors. And uh, NVMe itself is a little bit limiting because you're connecting it via PCIe, uh, but you're connecting it uh, just to that processor, that processor node. Uh, that's a little bit limiting. Uh, you, you, you want a little more flexibility. So what is coming out for the first time at this uh, conference, what is coming out is NVM EOF, <laughs> or NVMF, it's NVM uh, E over fabric. So it's the fabric version, and it's using the high-speed connects is using the RDMA Rocky, for example, that Mellanox has, uh, has announced and has got a huge market share. It's using that technology to connect multiple nodes to what is essentially a single view of the storage. So we, we are, um, uh, what we're seeing is that converged infrastructure, it's direct connect, but it's being seen just like a SAN. So the server SAN that we've talked about is actually coming into reality with NVMe and NVMeF. 
and you're seeing Intel in there with their uh, uh, their uh, their um, flash drives. You're seeing Western Digital. You're seeing Seagate. Uh, you're seeing uh, Micron. All of these people are working very hard on getting NVMe OF out, and that's a game changer. It's yeah. a real, real game changer. It's it's interesting as you keep talking about these layers of innovation and layers of innovation. I can't I can't help but think to the layman's you know, kind of version of this, which was the old, you know, operating system versus in CPU between Microsoft and Intel back in the PC days. And right. You can never have enough speed and horsepower, right? There will right. always be new applications, existing applications, but even more new applications to consume that capacity and speed. Well, what's very interesting as well is you're seeing uh, more platforms now on these uh, leading edge boxes. It used to be Linux. Now you're seeing uh, Microsoft, uh, Windows uh, coming into these new boxes. Uh, you, of course, have got VMware as well. So you've got three platforms which are now coming up to snuff, being invested in as three different ways to market, three different sets of workloads, three sets of applications which run on the different boxes. So yeah. again, you're seeing more choice actually coming right. out. Right, in, which in is always comes back, right? Yeah. This is horses for horses, what's best for the customer. That's right, that. that's Okay, right. so the final horseman that we didn't talk about yet is networking, yes. right? And finally, it sounds like SDN and, and, and kind of the promise of software-defined networking is really starting to come to fruition. Absolutely, well, f first of all, the speed of the network is absolutely crucial when you are starting with NVMe on these very, very fast flash boxes, you need very, very fast interconnects. So uh, what used to be overkill at 25 gigabits per, per second is now just entry point. And 100 gigabits per second, you can, you can load those with just three NVMe devices. So really, bandwidth is the key to making this whole thing work. And then on top of the bandwidth, you need the protocols, uh, Rocky and all the other protocols, uh, which are enabling you to make it into a fabric and be able to communicate with very, very low overheads uh, across this network. So that's one part of it. That's the, the, uh, the cabling. Uh, the cabling obviously needs to go longer as well. So photonics are coming in with longer distance, uh, longer, uh, longer distances as well. So that's coming in uh, for, for a da large data center. And then the last of it is some very interesting work being done on the operating systems. There's multiple operating systems that work on the switches. Uh, one of the most interesting is Microsoft, Microsoft Sonic, which uh, they've uh, announced and are talking about as part of that Azure link. And that's the connectivity they're talking about, very high speed connectivity between all of the nodes. And they've got some very interesting benchmarks which have shown tremendous important, uh, uh, tremendous benchmark results from NVM EOF uh, over these very high speed networks. So this really, uh, in my view, is the data center of the future. This is, we're seeing it emerge from very high speed networks, very high speed, uh, uh, very high speed uh, storage. The speed of the processes isn't improving so much, but the number of cores, the number of threads, GPUs, FPGAs, they're speeding things up as well. Right, so we're right. seeing this convergence of all three horses in the, uh, <laughs> in the uh, processor, the, the compute marketplace. We're seeing that convergence come together in a really different way that we've had it for the last 25 years. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting kind of the, the, the three horsemen of the, of the public cloud, you know, with Microsoft and, 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 and Google, and, Google, and yeah. AWS, you know, again, massive scale. You know, and I can't help but think of, of some of the presentations we saw at reInvent, when you have such scale behind you, even their own interconnects and their own data, data center, and you get into their network, the investment that they can make yeah. on cutting edge stuff, right. when these distributed applications worldwide, really moving the ball down the field. It's like moving the ball before. very fast. And it's, vo as always, it's volume. Volume right. counts, you right. made the point earlier. 
you've got to go after the volume and uh, all of these three areas now have flash has volume the processors have volume particularly with the arm and of course with the intel right. and now there's volume at these high speed interconnects which is i must admit something i wouldn't have predicted uh, 10 years ago and the other thing that's coming around the bend that we've talked about before is IoT, yes. and that changes yeah. the game. Now there's a whole nother layer of complexity thrown into the mix because now you've got distributed devices, you've got edge computing, you've got edge storage, you've got harsh environmental conditions in remote areas without connectivity. So this is going to change too, kind of dynamically, how's the compute store and network shifted yes. amongst yeah. between the devices, the data center, That's the right. little thing out in the yeah. field. Whole well, other shift, the, right? The, the, the key to that is low latency because you're having sensors with lower and lower latency, with higher and higher bandwidth, more and more data coming off them. And when you do the sums, you cannot move all of that data to a cloud. Right, right. So our prediction is that 95 to 99% of all data will live at the edge where the sensors are, and most of it's going to die there as well. So you're going to take extracts of that data, but the important decisions are going to be made in the first second after that data has arrived. Right, right. So you're going to get very, very high fidelity, for example, from a camera. You're going to do your imaging in the camera itself. The processing is going to be right next to where the most data is, which is that, that, that uh, raw image uh, file that you have in the camera itself. Right, right. So that's where IoT is going to have to make, earn its bread and butter, and you're going to have to do that processing at the edge. And you're going to have to connect just what you need to connect up to the cloud. You can't take everything up right. there. That's what I love about autonomous vehicles. I mean, it's yeah. a fun topic to talk about. It's easy yeah. to identify. We see, we see the, the Google cars driving all over the neighborhood all the time, but it's really just a great use case, a, a very easy, tangible thing. Of that, IoT. Yeah, yeah. The, of IoT, because yeah. if you got to yeah. make a split second decision to yeah. hit the brakes or not, if a kid rolls out in front of the car, <laughs> you're, you're not, not sending it up to the data center. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, well, exciting times to be yeah, in the industry. Cheers. You've been doing this for a while, and, and yeah. it just continues to evolve. It's fascinating. It is, I and mean, we focus on the disruptive areas, and that is exactly where all the action is these days. All right, well, David, again, thanks for stopping by. You can read a lot of David's work at wikibon.com, and uh, we'll see you at our next show. Absolutely, All thanks right. very much. David Floyer, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.